Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Yes, I've got another one for you guys today and I am currently on the test server. We're going to take Queen Ancora, the fusion champion, on a solo showcase. We're gonna see exactly what she's made of and what she can do for our accounts. I know, together with a partner, they're great for Arena. But what exactly can Ancora do alone on our accounts? I'm gonna start by saying that she's one of the very few revivers for the Night Revenant faction, and that will be very helpful for Faction Wars. In case if you're still trying to defeat that content, and I know a lot of you guys are new player, newish players, and you're always looking to get revivers, support champions to help you through throughout the game, you know. And for Arena on her own, she can be useful, but nothing too insane, okay? I feel like there are plenty of different uh, options for Arena that are better. But if you don't have Python, you don't have Elva champions like that, she's actually going to work just fine. She does have a cleanse, a bit of Termiter boost, a shield. She has the passive that can be helpful, a speed aura for all battles, you know. So I wouldn't necessarily say that she is a bad champion for Arena. We're going to take her in for a spin in a Hydra fight, guys. We're going to see how she performs in there. I do think that she can be pretty nice in, a, in there. She can be very useful for progression on dungeons if uh, that's something that you're looking uh, to do, you know, as a reviver uh, to give you a bit of shield, a cleanse, especially on the dragon, the ice golem. I don't think she's going to be great on the, on the fire knight. She can be decent for progression in the spider dungeon as well because she cleanses the poisons. She gives you the shield, so that will be helpful. The sleep uh, can be uh, sent to her from the ally with the highest crit damage. And for the Doom Towers, pretty much the same situation. So I do think she's going to do an amazing job as a progression champion. I do think for end game accounts like mine, for example, I think if I'm getting the partner, it's going to be great. If I'm not getting the partner, I think she will be used probably only in the Cursed City if we're going to have her in any of the rotations, you know? So just to be. Uh, Blunt with uh, with uh, with all of you. She's a decent fusion. I don't think she's kind of like wow, must have game changing. Uh, that has an insane potential for a lot of things. With a partner, yeah, she's they're gonna be very very good. But on her own, not necessarily that uh, that crazy. So let's quickly check the build that we have on her. So because I'm doing a PVE build, guys, I decided to go with Relentless. Now one thing that I haven't tried yet, and I kind of like want to try it. I'm pretty tempted to do it actually. Uh, is to give her resistance as well. But I currently have her on a Relentless set with an Immortal. The reason why I have that is because I want her to take as many turns as possible to support my team and use the A1 as much as possible. Has a chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skill by two turns, okay? That can be very helpful. Now, that chance goes to 50% fully booked and you need, you need the books if you really want to make the most out of her. The thing is, for the A2, yes, this will be on a 4 turn cooldown and she can work just fine without any books in there. The revive will be on a 5 turn cooldown and it's a single target revive. So that's why you kind of want to have, uh, have the books for her. But she doesn't require an insane amount of books, right? Only if you need to, to drop them in the passive too. So without the passive, she actually looks good in terms of books. But then when you add a passive, you're at 10, uh, 10 books basically. So overall, Pretty decent. So I have a uh, Relentless, how I mentioned, two counter-attack accessories just for that A1 to proc more often. 100k HP. You want to have a very high HP on her, and that is mainly because she will give you a shield based on her own HP. 3.2k defense, 290 speed. And how you may notice, I have nothing else in terms of stats, no accuracy, no resistance, but I'm really debating to, to change this to a resistance build. I want to see how her passive actually interacts with the resistance you know so we're almost at 400 resistance that should should uh, do the job i think if not we can look to quickly put a couple of glyphs if we have uh if we have where i'm on the test server i can't waste all these glyphs without thinking about it you know there we go just burn them all burn them all because we don't need them and these are the masteries guys so i have a uh, defense and support three i have timely intervention as tier six uh on uh on the masteries and I feel like that's the best option for the moment. Yes, you can go with Unshakable if you're trying to uh, go with a high resistance build, you know. But this is what I have for the moment in, uh, in terms of Masteries. She is fully booked and her speed went down a bit. She's 278. 
but we still have 90k HP, which should get the job uh, done. So we're going to do a run on Brutal, guys. And uh, this is the team that we're running. We're going to run Newt. We're going to uh, run Lady Mikagi as a, as an ally attack. We're going to have Mishinaki. We're going to have Molly as the provoker. And we're going to have uh, Ugo for block buffs. I could bring in a Supreme Gallic. I feel like he will uh, definitely work a bit better. But we're going to... We're gonna stick to it like uh, like this, you know, and get a get a job done. So we have hacks from Ishinaki, we have decrease attack from two different champions, and uh, this is the current rotation that we have on. I'm not even 100% sure if it's the same like uh, in game. I'm actually a bit confused. Very curious to see what happens with the with the debuff with the provoke. Fear, of course, cannot be resisted, so it's going to be pointless. Let's make sure Molly will be the the mischief target. And no point to use the A2. We're going to go with the A1. We haven't decreased the cooldown on a nobody. Uh, I have defense down on two enemies only. Let's try to pull Hex instead. And let's try to take the Head of Mischief down as uh, fast as possible, you know. Okay. Let's do another ally attack. So I think, I think her A1 decreased the cooldown of uh, Lady Mikage. I think that's what happened. I missed it on the screen, but I just had the skill available. So I would assume that... Uh, that's what happened. That's that's a very nice thing with the A1. I feel like, especially for content like this, uh, like the Hydra, she will be very, very nice because of it, you know? So right now I can just cleanse, for example, put a shield on my team. Mishinaki can put his defense down. Uh, if I need to use this skill to put more attack down, I can, or bring the weaken, but I'm not going to do it because uh, that will... Actually, it was not going to mess up my mischief target. Damn it. We can do that. So, Newt is the champion with the highest Kree damage in my team, okay? So, you're going to see that when we get a fear or something else, that will get transferred to her directly because of the passive. Okay. No decrease cooldown from there. So, look at all those debuffs. Now, she can just come in... Uh, come in... Uh, with her A2, cleanse all those poisons, you know, if you have it available, gain a shield on top of it. But first, I want to show you this. She gets the fear, and the fear goes directly to her. Newt doesn't get the, the fear, you know. So let's actually use the Meramorph. Put Weaken like this. Make, let's uh, make sure we have Reflect Damage to, to get the right things on. Put Block Buffs again, just in case if it's not there. And right now, she has the fear. So if my turn doesn't proc, I'm going to gain Termiter, you know. So we, we gain the Termiter instead. Now what I want to see is when the Head of Red will put a Provoke. How will that play out, you know, like... I know it will get transferred to her, but do we have a chance to resist it because of the resistance build or no? Very, very curious to know if that, that would be the case. Okay, so... He's not going to, to do it just yet. Not just yet. Okay, so let's drop that cleanse, bring the shield in, beautiful. Okay, no decreased cooldown of four. Oh my god. I supposed to keep that skill for a second uh, a second more. Look at that. It just dropped in with all the <laughs> with all of those poisons. Okay, we're gonna try to take the head down because he's being nasty. The fear went to her again, so let's just say I'm running a relentless uh note, right? And when I'm using the skill like this, I'm getting feared. So if I'm gaining the extra turn, I risk to waste the skill or maybe an Acrisia, you know? And that will actually put the fear to her instead, which is a very, very good thing, you know? I feel like it can be very helpful for those, those sort of scenarios. Okay. Do we have the Metamorph on? We should. Okay, there we go. Fear disappear. And let's do a cheeky ally attack on uh, the Head of Mischief. Maybe we're going to take him down. Okay, so that went down. We're going to kill the Head of Torment in here. We're going to put a decreased attack. Uh, put a weaken. No need to provoke with Molly because the Head of Mischief is not there. The Head of Decay is not there. The reason why I'm using the Provoke on Molly is just to gain the extra buff on her. And that will actually help me to uh, ensure that I'm keeping the same Mischief target. So let's try to cleanse. Hopefully that fear won't mess us, uh, won't mess us up. It did. Okay. So let's increase the duration of buffs. So I think we lost that skill right now. 
the thing is she just doesn't provide uh, provide a good uh, a good source of healing you know the a1 is just not reliable enough to have the healing i like that the the crowd control debuff is always going to her uh, from the ally with the highest uh, highest crit damage that's definitely an interesting uh, passive and it is much much better for for arena we decrease the cooldown on mishinaki if i'm not mistaken if i've seen where where the text just popped okay kill him we got that down beautiful so let's just slowly deal a bit of extra damage in here we need to heal before the head of red decides to to wreck us having the revive on a three-turn cooldown is pretty nice uh, on her as well you know it is a single target revive but hey decent i feel like we've got zero relentless proc so far what a shame what a shame because having more relentless procs will actually just help us with her uh with her a1 you know to uh, basically put a decrease the cooldown of the skills on some of the the allies provoke lovely for two turns let's put the block buffs on and i'm waiting for the head of uh head of rat to finally give me give me a provoke seems like it's not happening let's try to take the head of blight down in here okay we got uh we got that down i was gonna say the head of mischief the head of mischief always the head of mischief and I'm gonna keep that for the provoke. Let's actually go in with the skill on uh, the decapitated head. Get a bit of extra damage in there. Molly, she will rotate uh, enough, and we're gonna get a provoke back before it expires on the head of uh, decay. So we're gonna be fine with that. A1, uh, no decreased cooldown, unfortunately. Okay, heal reduction there. Defense down. I have. The blessing uh, on Molly, guys, that uh, is the is the lightning cage that uh, basically gives her an extra buff all the time. And like that, uh, it helps me to keep the mischief target spot on, you know. So consider that as, a, as an option for your mischief target. The head of mischief can be very annoying uh, sometimes. We're going to try to cleanse again, put a, put a shield on the team because that was going down. And we are at turn 24, 12 million damage. Of course, she's not really enabling the damage. What she is enabling is the survivability. Now, at the end of the, the video, we're going to do a couple of different um, comparisons in terms of uh, you need her or you don't based on uh, particular uh, particular uh, heroes. Unfortunately, I just missed it right now. I missed if that provoke landed on Newt or no, and she got resisted. Uh, maybe you guys noticed it because I, I started talking about something else and I haven't paid attention. But let me know in the comments down below if. Uh, if you notice that maybe not uh didn't got uh provoked you know okay a1 extra turn decrease the cooldown finally okay no decrease cooldown is a 50 percent chance right so it, even though it's not the craziest chance it should be pretty good so we have the head of uh the head of suffering in here which will put quite a few debuffs so what happens right now because you see my highest crit damage champion got decapitated. Well, she knows it. And now my highest uh, crit damage champion is actually Mishinaki in the team. So that should be uh, a bit better now. So I, I do want to do this, yes. I feel like the entire fight, we got one extra turn or two extra turns with, <laughs> with her Relentless set. Like, what is happening? What is happening with her Relentless? Do we have some cheap fake version of the Relentless set, guys? Is that what I have on here? Is that what I have on here? Put block buffs. Want to make sure nothing uh, crazy happened. Extra turn. There we go. We complain about it. Extra turn. There we go. We complain about it. Beautiful. But we still haven't decreased the cooldown of any of the skills like this. So Newt is back in business. Let's put hacks on everybody. Spread a bit of damage. And uh, we got to take care of the head of the KASAP. Seems like... Uh, we don't have a provoke on. I don't know. I don't think we got resisted. I think it just expired. And uh, by the looks of it, I won't have uh, I won't have enough termiter to cut in front of the the boss. So I'm expecting a a hard cleanse right now. I'm expecting a hard cleanse right now. 
Yep. I knew it. So now we can provoke. I'm still going to do it because we don't wanna we don't wanna have anyone shielded, you know. No point to use the A3 on uh, on Ugo. And hopefully this will kind of like give you guys uh, a couple of different ideas of how to, to run your Hydra team. I know I'm doing manual. I know a lot of you guys want to see auto. So from here on, I will be clicking on auto. But I just wanted to kind of like uh, walk you through the process of Hydra as well. Because I know a lot of you guys actually benefit from learning these things on how to prioritize uh, what heads you're hitting, when you're debuffing, when you're cleansing, when you're healing, what skills you're using. And hopefully the... Nine minutes of Hydra were, uh, were helpful. I've just realized that <laughs> I went on for so long, so I decided to, to put it on auto. I'm still very used to manual Hydra, guys, because uh, I tend to manual mine, you know, all, all of the keys usually. Except uh, when I'm slacking and uh, I'm not doing it. I wish they would uh, improve a bit the AI on the Hydra, you know. So we want to take down the Head of Mischief. That's kind of like the biggest... The biggest threat here can be the most annoying, uh, the most annoying head. So we're gonna try to deal with that. I was gonna say, hopefully Ugo will have the A2 available because the head of blight just, uh, just appeared, and we want to make sure he's not going to put a toxic cloud on uh, all of the heads. So for brutal, we need to get um, 30 plus million damage. Of course, the more the merrier, because if you are taking part in a Hydra clash, you will wanna maximize your damage to. Uh, either help your clan win, either help uh, uh, help yourself and get a top chest, you know. Boss turn come 45. We're definitely not doing bad considering that I haven't went in just uh, full, uh, full heavy on, uh, on damage, you know. My problem right now is that, how you may notice, the head of decay is back. We don't have the provoke available or I don't think we have the provoke available. And I really, really doubt it that we will get it in time. And that's why I like to manual, because right now I will be able to basically stop Ugo from using her A2 if she has it available. She doesn't, so we can, we can go on like this, no problem. We can go on like this, no problem. She is helping with the clans. She's helping with the survivability. Now, what I said, towards the end, I'll be doing a couple of comparisons. Some of you guys will be like, why do I need her if I have Mitrala? Right? Mitrala cleanses, gives me shield strength. And Mitrala, she does more things than her. So overall, she will be, she will be better. Don't get me wrong, okay? But I feel like you're going to use Mitrala in a team. And you're going to use her in a different team, you know? So that's kind of like how it's going to, to play out. You don't want to use them together. Because you're wasting, uh, you're wasting good support in the same team. When you can spread it around in uh, two different uh, teams, for example, you know? Come on, Queen Ancora, she has the fear again from, uh, from Nut. So basically, the champion with the highest crit damage is immune to all of the crowd control debuffs because they always, always go to her. We just got to decrease cooldown on Molly. So right now, she's going to provoke again, most probably. Don't do it. Don't do it because we have the provoke up for two turns. Save that skill, Molly. Be smart. Be smart and save it. Ah, damn. I think she, she missed... Uh, she missed uh, some classes at school because she decided to use it anyway. And again, we got a decrease cooldown on Molly. Again, she's going to use that skill. As long as the provoke drops in for two turns, I'll be happy with that, you know? I'll be happy with that. Now, when you are decreasing the cooldown of a skill by a... Uh, 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 completely, sorry. You are getting a heal as well on that champion. So that's, that's a nice touch. I just wish she would uh, provide a bit of more healing, honestly. And uh, that would make her much, much better. We finally lost a champion. I'm hoping that she's going to revive and not Molly. That's why I actually stopped it. Because another thing that you could do in Hydra, so hear me out. If you're not using block buffs, you can always uh, have a target and constantly kill that champion. So let's just say Newt, right? We want to kill Newt constantly. And we want to do that so we revive him all the time with Termeter and with all of the skills uh, on zero cooldown. So we can go back and forward and constantly use the enemy max HP skill or the big skill that the champion has. And this can be, of course, not only for this content, just for a lot of different content too, you know? And uh, I feel like it's something more, more challenging to do. You constantly need to manual. You constantly need to pay attention to all of those details. But having the opportunity to constantly do that and decrease the cooldown of the skills, similar with Godseeker and Eerie, right? I feel like it's very, very nice. It's, it's definitely a nice, a nice touch. And it will be most probably 
way more effective in arena, you know, where uh, your champions die more often without having uh, to try to kill them, you know, they're just going to, to die. They buy pair super good with Valkanen and her. Valkanen kills somebody, right? And she revives them with the cooldown decrease, then Valkanen deal deals his crazy damage. That could be an amazing, amazing combination, you know? But guess what? I don't have Valkanen, and I honestly do regret not picking the champion from the, from the guaranteed. So that's what we have, guys. Ancora, she's not built for damage. I'm not expecting her to bring damage. She provided us some shield. She provided a bit of healing as well, actually. And uh, 35.43 million, uh, million damage. We're going to regroup. And how I mentioned, the thing with Valkanen, okay? I know a lot of you guys went for the, for the guaranteed. Valkanen will basically sacrifice somebody. Well, which one is the skill? This one. It kills an ally, okay? So she can revive that ally and have all the skills on a zero cooldown and go back and, uh, back and forward with, uh, with it like that, you know? Because I wasn't able to really test what I wanted to test in Hydra with uh, her passive and the resistance, guys. We're going to go against the Doom Tower wave where we have Tormin and we're going to see how it will play out. The highest crit damage champion in my team is going to be Baron here. So I'm very curious to see if that freeze can be resisted. So... What I'm going to try first is to buff, and that will basically have a chance to freeze, uh, freeze them because of Tormin's passive, you know? So target changed. I think that's what it was, target changed from Baron to her, but we haven't got uh, the freeze on her, maybe because we got uh, resisted. I haven't seen uh, resisted on the screen either, you know? So that's, that's why I'm going to be like, hmm, did it happen or uh, no? Did it happen or no? Let's go to the next wave where we have uh, double uh, Tormin. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them use their, uh, their skill, you know. To see if uh, the provoke will, uh, will go through. My god. Why is this uh, Tormin so tanky? Let's go down, man. Go down. Enough. Enough with you. Decrease the cooldown on Baron. Nice. I like that. I like that touch. Okay, so one Tormin here. Let's, let's try it again. One X speed and see. Okay, so target changed again from Baron. Oh, we got resisted. We got resisted. I've seen it now. So it works. You can resist with the passive. So if you have enough resistance on her, when the enemy tries to land the debuff on the, crowd, uh, on the ally with the highest scree damage, that gets transferred to her and she can resist it. Okay, so I, I've seen it. I've seen it happening right now. And it happened the previous uh, time too, but I just haven't really noticed exactly what happened there, you know. So I'm going to try to kill everybody else except Tormin here. I want Tormin to use his uh, provoke skill, you know, and see how that plays out. Come on, Tormin. And she got resisted again because the target changed. You've seen it on the screen. So yes, that works. That works. Okay, so... Spot on, it can work for Hydra too. And uh, like that, she's not going to, to get CC. Of course, the true fear from the head of Torment, it won't be resistible. So you cannot, uh, you cannot dodge that. Let me just quickly change the build on her. We're going to put in a, a, a stone skin set. So let's do a couple of fights in arena with her, guys, without using her partner, okay? So we have quite a few different teams in here. And we want to see what exactly she can... Uh, she can do for our team. So we have Rotos in there. We're going to have to play it a bit uh, around. That Rotos will try to annihilate my, uh, my Georgit. We're going to go with Wukong as well. Uh, I just want my champions to kind of die basically and uh, try to get some value out of uh, her revive, you know. And I knew I need him to go a bit faster. If not, my Georgit is going gonna, is gonna to die. He's going to die. Remove the buffs with the Wukong. Okay, we, we took the turn before, so we're going to try to do that. Nice. And then go on Sifi. Nice. So extra turn. What's that Rotos doing? He just hit my squishy Georgie like a thousand times. What happened? Okay, the team is not uh, very effective, but seems like we decreased the cooldown on the skill with uh, her for Wukong. So now we can pull him off that Duchess. And just kill her. Okay. I really wanted that Georgie to die. But seems like uh, 
was just not meant to be. It was just not written in stars for him to die. If we're gonna go against MTG Jedi, so he we have a crazy team right here. We have both of the couples. I do want to play it a bit differently. So we're gonna bring in Rotos because we do want to win the fight, right? And we're going to bring in Lady Mikage. Let's go like this. We only have one uh, reviver. That Rotos is definitely going to go down. I'm definitely going to lock this uh, this enemy. No questions asked. Uh, the A1 won't really do nothing right now. So Rotos, uh, ally attack on on the queen. Let's go on the queen. He's down. Let's go on the king. He's down. This Rotos is just too 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 nasty. Okay. Maybe we just keep Rotos in there, but we don't actually attack. You know, we just keep him as a design. Okay. So we 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 dropped. We, we're dropping you, Meko. It doesn't really matter who dies, honestly. It doesn't really matter who dies as long as we are getting a decreased cooldown on all of the skills. Right now, we decreased the cooldown of the skills on Mikage. So from four turns, we went back down to a one turn. So soon we will be able to use that and get another ally attack, which was nice. Mikage and Yumeko, you know, the, the Shadow King uh, combo, which is very nice. Uh, A1 only. We don't want him to, to be too crazy. Okay, we lost Yumeko. Right now, we desperately, desperately need Yumeko to come back and lock all of their skills. But first, we're going to do another ally attack. And right now, we're going to do this with Yumeko, lock them again. We have the ally attack back in business. We have all the skills on Rotos. So we can slowly just go and kill this, uh, this Taras, you know? Very, very nice. We can put a shield up, get some Termiter. We can do a cheeky ally attack in here, drop a bit of Termiter on her. Make sure we're getting her... Uh, down and ready for Rotos to go in with the A3 and uh, end her once and for all. Everybody's coming back to life. That's fine. Look at all the destroyed HP on him. We can annihilate her now. So there's literally no danger. A1, decrease the cooldown of the skills on Yumeko. Let's use that skill. Yumeko has this skill almost available again, guys. She needs one more turn. Like, they're not, they're not doing, doing much, you know. Of course, of course, it will be a bit of a, a different cup of tea, uh, depending on what sort of team you are uh, using. So what I do want to try this time around is to go without a lockout. And I want Damitrala to somehow debuff me. So we're not going to use Yumeko. We're not going to use Mikage. We're going to use him. And we're going to use... Uh, UDK. Where is my UDK? Ultimate. And this will be the final fight, guys. We're gonna see the petrification and everything else that comes in play from, uh, from Mitrala, you know. If it comes in play. Now, this is usually a very tanky team. Uh, I wish I was gonna bring in Wukong instead of, uh, instead of uh, Pythian, honestly. That was a mistake for me. But that's fine. We're gonna continue like this. Oof. Rotos just went down. Like, the king took Rotos down like Nothing happened, honestly. That was that was uh, that was nasty. So right now we're gonna revive and drop the termiter on them a bit. You see the termiter dropped, but maybe not not enough. Uh, yeah. I mean, the king and the queen they're good. They're not bad. You know they are doing some work. They are doing some work. That's for sure. They are doing some work. And the provoke. Went to her from my uh, UDK. Now I don't want to end this on a on a on a loss here, man. I don't want to. I don't want to end it like this. We're gonna have to to go against this team again. We're gonna have to go against this team again. And this time around, we're going to go with Wukong and uh, pray for the best. I feel like my team is just not strong enough for them. Honestly, even even now, even now, I feel like they're just not strong uh, strong enough. So let's polymorph him. Oh, we got resisted. No way. That was a 3% chance. No way. The damage that he's doing on my team is actually some, some serious damage. He is not messing around. He is not messing around. Okay, I was going to say, that's, that's more like it. That's more like it. That's more like it. Ooh. That's a bit unfortunate there. Uh, right now, I want to I wanna shield a bit. I want to shield a bit. And I want to remove as many buffs as possible. 
Uh, let's try to do a cheeky fear on them. Okay. So we have Hex. Let's try to put the king down. The king is dangerous. The king is dangerous. Let's try to put Duchess down too. Almost, almost. She's going to revive. I was gonna... So the petrification went to her. Of course, we had no uh, resistance. Not enough to uh, resist uh, a Mitrala. The king is scary because he's using that freaking AoE, which is so, so, so nasty, man. But we don't have shield on the team. Some of them have strengthened. Roto survived. She survived. Please. Get my Wukong back up and running, please. Get me some healing quick. Oh no, the Termiter that they're putting in. Let's remove the buffs. Rotos, please kill that king. Kill that king. Thank you. That was getting dangerous. Now, I want to take her down before, uh, before that Duchess. You know why? Because if she revives, she's going to bring him back with full HP. And she's going to drop 20% of my, uh, of my Termiter. And that will be very, very, very dangerous. So we're going to try to strip some buffs. Rock that 3% chance, you know. Damn, he clapped me so good before that king, huh? And GG's. GG's. Now, of course, we had to, to revive uh, Wukong before just to quickly try and get the edge. Uh, having your champion revived with a zero cooldown on skills is massive for pretty much everything, you know? I think she's decent for Arena as well without a partner. Not necessarily the best support out of the rest of them, but can, she can do some work, you know? And I feel like she will be more effective in live arena than classic arena, you know? For tag team arena, she will be very efficient too. But that was all for the video, guys. Please let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of Queen and Korra? Are you tempted to go for the fusion or you're not really interested uh, in her? Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.